Om Gyanati Tibhidanda Sya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chukshulan Militam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual teacher opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances to him. So good evening everyone. Hare Krishna to all of you. Uh, so Mukunda Charna Prabhu, this man in the orange back here, and um, Vijay right here, over there. <laughs> We've been going through a series of talks here at the Krishna Lounge based on a book called The Light of the Bhagavat. I don't know if you can see that so well back there, but anyways. <laughs> um, so this book, it's a beautiful book, and it uh, probably, I don't know, maybe, let's see how many there are. There's... Yeah, 46, 46 wisdom quotes, and specifically they are um, dealing with nature. So what we can learn from nature. And uh, aside from what we can learn from nature, there's beautiful il illustrations here uh, in this book too. So, uh, yeah, so we're, on, we're making steady progress. We're on 10, uh, quote 10, page 30. So yeah, we're making good progress here. So I'll just read that, and then, um, and then we'll discuss. Just as a living being attains a transcendentally or spiritually attractive uh, form by rendering service in Krishna consciousness, similarly, all the inhabitants of the land and the water assume beautiful forms by taking advantage of the newly fallen water. All right, so we don't always read the uh, commentary to the quote, but um, I'll read a little bit of it because it illuminates it. So this is uh, Sri the Prabhupada, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement. He's commenting on this. He says, We have practical experience of this with our students in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Before becoming students, they were dirty looking although they had naturally beautiful personal features. But due to having no information of Krishna consciousness, they appeared very dirty and wretched. Since they have taken to Krishna consciousness, their health has improved, and by following the rules and regulations, their bodily luster has increased. When they are dressed with saffron, <laughs> saffron cloth, with tilak, so saffron cloth, <laughs> tilak, um, on their foreheads and beads in their hands I need some beads in my hand but um, and on their necks they look exactly as if they come directly from Vaikuntha so one more paragraph the residents of the water are the fish frogs and so on and the residents of the land are the cows deer and so on by constantly drinking and taking bath in the fresh rainwater of the rainy season, the tired and parched animals are refreshed, and their complexions become brilliant as their health is invigorated by the arrival of new rainwater. The lakes, ponds, and rivers are cleansed and invigorated by the downpour of new rainwater and thus become most beautiful. And it goes on. So, um... And so it's saying similarly one who takes to uh, Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga. Um, it's explaining how the, these, these animals who are uh, parched and um, right thirsty, upon taking advantage of the rainwater, they, um, they, uh, they become, yeah, their complexions look very brilliant and they're, they're, they, 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 uh, look very healthy, invigorated. Um, and also talking about the lakes, ponds, rivers are cleansed by invigor and invigorated by the downpour of new rainwater and, and thus look very beautiful. So the animals in this, uh, in this uh, season, season of autumn, they are, uh, yeah, invigorated as, 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 um, just as the um, ponds and rivers are cleansed and invigorated as well. Um, 
So similarly, a person who takes to spiritual life or Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga, they become uh, invigorated, they become enlivened, they become happy, they become peaceful, all of these um, positive things that people want, they're able to, to attain. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of funny sometimes because... Uh, the people in this world, right, they give all types of seminars and, and workshops and podcasts and all different types of things on um, on how to be happy, right? <laughs> Which, I don't know if anybody's given a podcast or seminar or workshop on how to be happy, but, you know, it could be a little challenging because <laughs> you really, uh, you have to be happy. Or at least you got to put on a good show, right? Um like you're, you know, looking like you're happy, or else people are like, "Oh man, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to listen to this person's talk. It doesn't look so happy. They don't seem happy." So, um, so when we hear when I when I'm I'm here and I'm you know reading this quote and it's saying that oh somebody who's you know taken to Krishna consciousness bhakti yoga, they look very bright and they look very happy. <laughs> so. Um, So yeah, you could say it could be a challenge because you know I, I'm 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 speaking about this, so I should also look very bright and happy, or else people are like, "What's up with this guy?" <laughs> so um, I've been sorry to use myself as an example, but sometimes you do that when you speak. But I've been um, trying to practice or practicing as much as I can Krishna consciousness for the last 15 years, and um, I joined the temple here when I was 18. Cause some, sometimes I tell people I've been around for 15 years, and they look, like, oh, you know, looks you're kind of young or younger, too young to be around for 15 years. But I, I, I joined the temple when I was 18, so kind of 32 now. So I was coming around when I was 17. Um, this temple, but uh, so someone may th like look at me or speak with me or be looking at me and and and, and hearing me right now, either in person or maybe a few are online um and you know there's different different uh perceptions people have of of me oh this person's um looking very happy this person's very looking very invigorated or or maybe he's not or whatever there's different opinions perceptions now if someone was to look at me right now and um say i don't look very bright aside from my newly dyed cloth, which is kind of bright, but if someone was to look at me and, um, and, and, and think, okay, well, this person um, doesn't seem so bright, and I'm not talking about intelligent, I mean, they could think that too, <laughs> of course, but this, does, this person doesn't look so bright or uh, invigorated or enlivened in spiritual life. So someone may look at me and think that. And my uh, particular answer to that <laughs> is that, well, you should have saw me before. <laughs> In other words, uh, you know, sometimes you see kind of before and after pictures. Um, somebody, you know, they have like a, you know, I don't know, very common with the weight, you know, very common. But they have a co also with, uh, you know, sometimes they have... They probably still do this right with shows, and you know the person, you know they don't care about their looks so much, and they're just kind of whatever. And then okay, we're gonna have a makeover, right? And you know, so before and after. So, um, so also spiritually, uh, that happens. You know, you take a picture of somebody before they take to, to spiritual life, and then you take a picture afterwards. So I would say that well, you should have saw me before. <laughs> If you don't think I'm looking bright now, I'm looking a little better than I did before. Um, you need a chair, Alex? We have a chair for you. We, we, we want you to be comfortable. You've been standing all day. Do you think you could get him a chair, Glenn? Or maybe somebody? Oh, you could sit here. Okay. You've been standing every all day, right? Yeah. He's been standing all day. You can relax a little bit. Um, and sometimes we can't really uh, we can't really tell our progress 
and spiritual life. Now we may look at a picture, an old picture of ourselves, and there's a lot in the eyes, actually, right? They have that saying, right? Eyes are the window to the soul or all these different things. There's tr truth to that. But um, you may look at an old picture of yourself before you, take, before you um, started to practice spiritual life. And yeah, I've done that. I mean, I have a picture of myself when I was, I don't know, maybe 14. And my two sisters were there in the picture as well. And um, and yeah, the, the expression on my face and my eyes and the way I was just carrying myself. Um, and I have uh, other people, they... <laughs> yeah, this is my mother too over here, by the way. So she, she, Yeah. So I painted a... If you know, wonder what she's talking about. I think I painted an American flag on my face one time. It was Halloween, but... I did a, um, so when I was looking at this picture, I was thinking, oh, this is, I look so, um, kind of, um, miserable, lost, confused. Yeah. Anyways, et cetera. So, um, but, but sometimes, you know, looking back at that picture, okay, I, I, could get a good, I could get some sense, okay, what progress I've made. But sometimes it's common. I talk to a lot of people and, uh, you know, spiritual practitioners, and sometimes they're thinking, oh, I can't really tell the progress I'm making. And the example, the example is given of like, a, like an airplane. So an airplane, it's, right, there's an airplane right there. Here. So airplane, when it's, when it's um, taking off, you know, you're, we're sitting there in the seat and uh, we're, f whatever, fall asleep or we're listening to some music or we're reading some book or talking to a friend or something. And we don't really notice uh, how high we're going, right, in that process of talking with our friend or whatever. So then, then we look outside and we, know, and, we, and we see that we're actually really quite high up. Just like when you leave San Diego, um, hopefully you leave San Diego sometime on a plane, but um, it's nice to do that sometimes, get away from San Diego. But when you're leaving San Diego, you look down and, yeah, you're you know, seeing Pacific Beach and all that quite high. So similarly in spiritual life, sometimes it's imperceptible, the progress we're making. But then we look back and say, oh, yeah, I made a lot of progress. Um... So like I said, my mother's over here in the corner. She just came from Oregon. You know, she drove down. Um, but <laughs> if I didn't know any of you when I was a teenager, but she knew me. <laughs> we grew up together. She raised me. Um, but uh, anyways, she could testify to that, that there's a positive change, if anybody can. Um, so... So in relation to that, um, also there was um, there was this uh, person. His name was uh, Peter. Some of you heard this before, but some of you haven't. Um, he 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 became um, he wanted to join the the Boston Temple, the Boston Hare Krishna Temple, back in the seventies. So then, uh, what he did is he started to. Uh, to he he started to camp. Well, I, I anyways, I think he can say that he kind of joined the temple, but he was a little eccentric. So what he started to do is he started to to live in the lobby. He started to live in the lobby, the temple lobby. So he would just, you know, he would sleep there and then, you know, he he would get up and he would read and you know do different things in the lobby. Um so So uh, he was a little eccentric. So some of the temple uh, residents, they started calling him uh, Crazy Peter. So, um, and then they wrote. They wrote to their guru and they said, oh, we have this, we have this Peter here and you know, he's a little crazy and, and um, we're thinking about asking him to leave. So the guru, he wrote so many things back in the letter. And then he said, uh, 
thing that really stood out to those in the in the group was that what's the matter? Can't you tolerate? So, um, so in other words, they got the they got the message that we should let Peter uh, continue to live here. So then, some time passed. My spiritual teacher, he was there living in the Boston Temple. He went to India, um, and then he came back like like twenty thirty years later to Los Angeles. So he was in the Los Angeles Temple, and then he looked to to uh, in the temple room, and then he saw this person <laughs> who. Um, who looked like crazy Peter, who looked like Peter. So then he asked one, another person, he said, oh, is that, he looks familiar from the Boston Temple like 20, 30 years ago. And then, um, and then this person told him that, yes, that's true, that's, that's Peter, or not Peter, that's Kushukrata. It's Kushukrata, it's a Sanskrit name, that's Kushukrata. And then my teacher said, oh, Kushukrata. Now, Kushukrata, um, those of you who know him, or those of you who heard about him, um, he did like a very valuable service for this uh, Hare Krishna movement. What he did is he, he got so many of these ancient wisdom books written in Sanskrit, so a very ancient language, and then he translated it word by word from, Eng uh, from Sanskrit into English. So he was doing this for many, many years, publishing these books. Um, which, if a book's locked in a language, it's locked in a language. <laughs> Unless you understand the language, you can't. So he was making all of these ancient wisdom books, very, very powerful books, um, available throughout the whole entire world. Many, many volumes, many, many books. So then my teacher, he heard about this and he said, oh, wow, crazy Peter. He, he became Kushukrata. He became a very um, intelligent good, you know, spiritual practitioner. And aside from that, he was doing this invaluable service of translating all of these wonderful books. So what is this what does this teach us that that somebody who um didn't look like they have a bright future, if uh they were given a chance to an opportunity to engage in spiritual life and uh and, and, and they ended up um, being very valuable, it means very bright, very uh, productive spiritually. Um, so this teaches us that one is that we need to be, or we should, of course everybody could do whatever they want, but <laughs> um, it's good to be uh, tolerant with others, try to give them opportunities to make progress if we can. And, um, and also uh, for ourselves, to be tolerant with ourselves. In other words, it may take a while. <laughs> it, uh, it, it's not going to happen overnight, uh, spiritual progress. Um, our teacher gave the example of a, of a newly um, married woman and man. Uh, he gave the example that they may want a child immediately, specifically says the woman may want a child immediately <laughs> upon getting married, but it will take some time, at least, what, nine months, right? For the child to manifest. So similarly, um, we may want spiritual progress, but we have to be tolerant with ourselves, means tolerating our own shortcomings, and um, it may take some time, usually does. Um, and aside from that, we should be kind to ourselves. I mean, people people have these all these different ideas. Yes, I'm going to be kind to others. I'm going to um, I'm going to get a bunch of donations, right? I'm going to get a bunch of bread, and then I'm going to take that bread and I'm going to get some peanut butter and jelly and then I'm going to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and I'm going to go down to Ocean Beach and pass out a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to people who need peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? And in this way I'm a kind person. Now that's, you know, it's good, it's better than just... Um, and there's so many different ideas of kindness, right? Kind, 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 and there's ideas I'll be kind to, 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 to people, which is good. But we also have to be kind to ourselves. 
I mean, that's who we're living with, right? Most of the time we're with ourselves. Be kind to ourselves. Um, and what does that mean? It means that that as living beings, we need engagement, right? We need engagement. And and the movers and shakers of society means the business brained son of a whatever <laughs> business brained people. They understand that that we need engagement. What does that mean? That means that. Uh, we are moving and functioning based on desire. We have desires. Um, just like those who are c creators of, of Hollywood movies, right? Um, they understand that people like Hollywood movies, and therefore they're just pumping them out like crazy, right? Or Mr. Amazon, he understands that people want stuff, right? or need stuff. And therefore he comes up with a very elaborate system how to make it easy for people to get stuff, provided they pay. Um, or the fashion industry. People, people, the, the, the people who are, who are um, coming up with all different types of, you know, whatever, fashion. Clothes and this and that, and watches and cars. and They understand that people like variety, so therefore they're creating all these varieties, right? so that we could go after them. So in other words, we, um, the senses, the eyes, the nose, the sense of taste, the hearing, we have all these urges and they want to be engaged. So, so the idea is that within, within, within human life, um, which is different than animal life, I know some people argue that point, but, um, it's different than, than, than animal life. The human life, it's, it's, it's an opportunity in which we don't just have to engage our senses materially. Um, which which one, one of our teachers, he was saying the other day, right? The, the four basic principles, eating. <laughs> Everybody's eating every day, practically. Sleeping, mating, defending. These are things that humans and animals have have in uh, common. Um, and if you analyze so much of the world, uh, it's just revolving around these things: eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Um, of course, people try to find some loopholes in how certain things don't relate to those things, but ultimately they do. Um, like, <laughs> I mean, like, like, like sex. It's a very powerful force within this world, maybe the most powerful. Um, and so much of modern so called society is revolving around it because they take that as the highest enjoyment. So, so people say, oh, hey, we're just having a cultured, you know, <laughs> we're just living our culture. It's, you know, we're just at a nice restaurant downtown and, and, and whatever. We're dressed in a certain way. Like people go down, to, or people come to the Pacific Beach. Yeah, we're just dressing up for some reason. And we're just going to the bar for some reason. And we're just, you know, eating certain foods for some reason. We're drinking certain things for some reason. Yeah. The reason's obvious. Um, so, so the thing is that, okay, we have all these urges, we have all these senses, we, we need engagement. Now, there's ways to engage ourselves that are, are spiritually uplifting, that are positive, that actually bring real satisfaction, real happiness, not cheap, shallow, um, temporary happiness just like the happiness of of eating our tongue i was going to show you my tongue but i'm not going to do that <laughs> just like the eating just like eating okay now now let's say somebody likes ice cream now of course if they're vegans they don't like ice cream but let's say the person's not a vegan they like ice cream probably and they go to baskin robbins now how much 31 flavors right is it? Maybe they got more now. 
That's their 31 flavors. Now, there may be 31 flavors. Now, can you have a can we have a scoop of those 31 flavors? One scoop of each? No. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's some people. But usually you can't do that. You can have a few scoops of a few flavors. And then you have a point of just, you don't want any more. You're sick of it. You're disgusted by it. In other words, it becomes unpleasant at a point. And if you don't believe me, you could go try it out after this talk if you're, if you're not. A, you know. or, or, or you could pick any type of food you like. So one is it's, 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 it's temporary, it lasts for a certain amount of time, which isn't long. And that's all material pleasures are like that. They don't last for very long. So a, a, uh, one whose intelligence isn't completely thrashed by, by um, the harassment of, of, of you know, postmodern culture, one whose intelligence is in completely thrashed by bombar bombardment, is uh, material bombardment, they may think that, hey, well, all right, there's something there, but maybe there's something a little better than that. There might be. And therefore, they, 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 they could try for some type of spiritual happiness, right? People go to the Buddhist temple for that. People go to churches for that. People go to temples for that. People, sometimes people come to the Christian lounge for that. Some type of spiritual um, um, experience. Which um, I could tell you is, um, which I'm sure all of you know, but just to reconfirm your conviction, is that there is something there. There are spiritual experiences. Um, and, we, and it is available. We can experience it. Um, and, uh, or else, I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not insane. <laughs> At least I don't think I am, but, um, in other words, I've been here for so many years. I've been here... I've been here for for 14 years. That's a long time, I think. Anyways, I don't I don't feel it a long time, but people they they take that as a long time. So in other words, I uh, I'm I'm experiencing something, having a spiritual experience. Um, so that experience is is completely available to everyone. Of course, you don't have to join a temple, but it's available if you want to. But you don't have to. Um, it's available for everyone, that spiritual experience. And so, so how does that take place? That takes place by uh, by not just <laughs> like our body. Our body is nourished by food and water. If we don't have that, then no nourishment. So, so as humans, we're not just supposed to eat intake food and, and drink water or other things yeah we'd have to do that but that will only give the body nourishment but there's also the spiritual there's the soul spiritual soul and that also needs nourishment um so how do we get that nourishment the other day we read a quote in the morning class here at the temple that people who just eat grains and and food Body becomes nourished, but uh, but they struggle uh, or suffer uh, spiritually. Their soul, what means them, soul, and they become um, you know bewildered or um, lose the opportunity for spiritual progress. So um, we're able to nourish ourselves, the soul, by. Uh, by reading, <laughs> oh my God! Now by reading, of course, people, some, some people boring, you know, oh, that's so boring reading. Now, of course, not everybody thinks that, but um, and yeah, d and in many ways, reading is boring. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the subject matter. I mean, people read about all types of things, how to like, I don't know, all ty different types of things, and they don't take it as boring. You know, it's like very, very, uh, how to make money or something. All right, this is very interesting. 
but then it's something spiritual they may fall asleep so it depends on the subject matter right um but spiritual spiritual messages they're not boring and if we see them as boring then okay maybe we need to uh you know maybe we should work on that a little bit in other words uh, ultimately it's not boring but if we see that then you know there's our mind isn't exactly um now there are some people who just don't read i understand that they don't like to read and even if it's spiritual stuff they just don't read okay i understand that different natures so okay then we could hear just like right now we're hearing I'm speaking. So to hear spiritual subject matters is important because what is in our mind, like if we fill our minds with spiritual subject matters, that will propel us in a particular direction, namely in a spiritual direction. Now if we hear about a bunch of material things, that will propel us in a material direction, materialistic direction. So if we if we may not be big readers and i say okay we could try you know try our best try to get into it spiritually if not okay then okay hear because hearing the messages of the spiritual messages that will propel us in a spiritual direction and that means ananda not amanda but that means ananda that means bliss spiritual spiritual messages propelling in a spiritual direction that means bliss that means um unending bliss happiness and uh we will feel completely invigorated completely enlivened um we'll feel completely inspired spiritually and um that is considered to be the at least from this particular tradition standpoint that that's considered to be the the best uh use of time for us to become um to act in such a way where we become spiritually inspired enlivened um rather than just somebody who's just um like i wa- I, t- I was taking a I was taking a, um, a meditation walk up the hill here, and I walked past one of the bars there, and you know, I was, you know, I was look naturally kind of glancing who was there at the bar. <laughs> I thought it really, anyways. Um, and there's a bunch of you know men and women there together, trying to have a good time, and um, I was looking at all of them, and I was, you know, of course, people think oh, judgmental or something, but I mean. Uh, the, the, like to me, my perception is uh, these. I don't know how they all. I'm 32 now. They must be. I don't know. Maybe in their 20s or something. But you know, looking in their eyes and how they're talking with each other and all this, it just seems like they want to just turn off their brain and just enjoy their body. And um, and I think that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> trying to turn off their brain and enjoy their body. Um, but to me, it looked like a, like a scene from high school or something. Like people aren't growing up. Um, which, it means that... It, Okay, I understand if someone's, you know, going through teenage life and they want to turn off their brain and enjoy their body, <laughs> to, you know, to you know, material pleasures. Their, their their senses are on fire. Okay, I understand that. Um, but there comes a time where people should, um, in other words, someone shouldn't be a 50-year-old man, a 60-year-old man, and, 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 you know, with a 16-year-old mind. With a mind that hasn't matured. Sometimes women they complain about those. At least those women who are in relationships with men, they say, "Oh yeah, the guy's like a, you know, <laughs> guy's like a big baby, you know, <laughs> sixteen-year-old." So, but with women, with men, with everybody, um, the the consciousness should mature, and mature means 
to uh, turn on the brain means to, to be thoughtful, to think, to, um, to try to you know, move in a spiritual direction. And, uh, and if someone doesn't live like that, then, I mean, if someone doesn't learn that, then uh, personally I think it's quite sad. And uh, seeing these people, ultimately, <laughs> at least from my perspective, it's kind of heart shattering because I understand what their experience, because I also experienced it. I grew up here in San Diego. I didn't come from India, by the way. Um, I have full experience of living, uh, you know, San Diego life means materialistic life. I have full experience of that. <laughs> Um, so I understand exactly what, practically speaking, of what they're going through because everybody th thinks it's so unique and everything, but it's, <laughs> anyways, I understand practically the psychology, what they're thinking, what they're going through, what they're trying to experience, and I've, I, I've experienced it myself, in essence. But now, through some spirit, through some grace, through some, um... I have a spiritual experience, and um, I could see that it's it's uh, far more um, far more um, enlivening or uh, invigorating or pleasurable. So, yeah. All right. Does anybody have any uh, questions or comments? I know a lot of people have their masks on, so. Uh, Anyways, that's kind of difficult with that, but does anybody have any uh, questions? Whoops. What happened there? Oh, that was some little buckets. Yes. Um, can you pass the mic? Yeah, they want to use it for... Um, they want to use it for uh, um, online. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> it's a little... Uh, yeah, so you said that you used to live a material life. Yes. And then how did you, um, I guess, how did you change over to a more spiritual self? And like, how long did that take? And how was it painful? And how painful? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so, all right. Yeah, great question. Um, well, I I got a I got a book, a spiritual book called Perfection Yoga when I was 16 years old here in San Diego, and it was from this amazing man by the name of Radhanath. That's a spiritual name, and he was amazing because he was in a wheelchair, with uh, he, his, his legs were amputated from the knees down, but he was amazing because he would go out like six days a week, for many hours a day. And he would he would um, situate himself outside of grocery stores. So, um, and and he would pass out books, spiritual books, because that's how he felt that he would, um, you know, make a difference in the world, or in some be people's lives. And <laughs> yeah, he made a difference in my life. Um, so he gave me one of those books. I was walking out with my mother here, and we and I got a book, and um, she bought a flower from him, and I, I started reading that book. And I was very impressed, you know, with the with the knowledge in that book. And one of one of the things that the little quotations I was impressed with, it said, "You are not your body, but your pure spirit soul." And I was very impressed by that. Amused, attracted. Um, so then I, yeah, I was about yeah, I was sixteen, and then I, um, going towards seventeen, I was I was working at this uh, restaurant. And uh, I was cutting bread. It's a bread cutter. <laughs> cutting bread for hours every every shift. S yeah, sounds fun. Yeah, I cut my finger a few times. Luckily, I didn't I cut my finger off. Jeez. Anyways, I was cutting bread, and um, and uh, so when I when I was working there, there was one girl there, uh, and um, she, we would talk sometimes, and then she said. Oh, I, oh! You have a book," she said. "I also got one of those books. Chant, be happy." I said, "Okay, great." 
So they said, oh, let's go down to the temple, this temple here. So when we set up some appointment, I met with one of the monks and we spoke for quite some time. I had a bunch of challenging questions. And uh, and then um, I just, from the age of 17 to 18, I was visiting here. And uh, when I was about 17 and a half, I, uh, I was up in L.A. and then some of the some of the monks from here, they were saying, oh, yeah, you should just shave your head. <laughs> and I was still in high school, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know about that. And, you know, but somehow they convinced me. I was, anyways, we're friends. And so I shaved my head and uh, had this little, you know, tuft in the back. And then I, we had this big festival in L.A., and I was you know, very happy. And then I came back down to San Diego, I came back to my mother's house here in, in La Mesa and then I walked I walked in and I had my shaved head and I had my you know T lock my paint on my forehead and I came in I was wearing like a robe and stuff and then and then my um sister Macy my little sister Macy she's uh she's probably like I don't know nine or something maybe ten, ten, eleven. And um she was with her friend and then uh, they started laughing, you know. Laughing, oh you know. So then they called my my mother's work, and then she and then they said my sister said, "Oh yeah, Bronson, he just came home, and you know he's got a shaved head, and and he's wearing this paint on his forehead, and and he's wearing a skirt, you know, <laughs> um, you know the robe was a skirt, you know. Anyways, so then my mother came home, and I I eventually brought her down to the temple, and then um, yeah, she uh, still comes to the temple." So, so it was like a gradual progress of me, um, just, um, it was like compare and contrast. I would go to a local Seventh-day Adventist church, I would go to a Buddhist temple, and then I would come here. And I would compare and contrast the different um, experiences, you know, how I felt when I, when I would sing there, when I would hear their message, and, you know, I was comparing and contrasting. So, um in terms of it being painful, uh, I mean, life, like right now, my knees kind of experience a little pain, but um, life in general, there's, there's a little pain involved. Maybe you notice that. Um, there's mental pain. You're at work and your boss is giving you a hard time about this and that. Or there's pain of a loss. You know, you lose somebody means they leave your life or they pass away, something like that. There's all different types of varieties of different uh, pain, mentally, physically. So within spiritual life, um, the pain one may experience, and usually does experience, is uh, the pain of not making as much progress as 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 a person as a person would want to in other words they think that they should be at a certain level of spirituality but they're not and aside from not being at a certain level of spirituality they start to notice that um there's some lingering qualities there that aren't exactly spiritual Mater uh and the, and the example is given of like dirt, like dirt on the consciousness, which which translates into selfishness and greed and anger. You know, all of these different strong material emotions that ultimately, if aren't controlled, just wreck a person's life. So they start noticing this. And the example is given of like when you clean an attic. I don't know if you've ever cleaned an attic before. You try to avoid that in your life. It's not a very pleasant experience. <laughs> They clean an attic, and it's just, you know, all this junk everywhere, and it hasn't been cleaned for a long time, and a bunch of dust. and But, of course, people love attics because you could put, you know, junk in there and stuff. But So, now imagine you haven't cleaned an attic for f one year, five years, ten years, twenty years. It gets pretty dirty, you know. So our consciousness, now imagine, imagine, for example... Imagine we haven't bathed. I, I met some guy. He told me he didn't bathe for, 
How long was SB didn't bathe for? Only two weeks? I thought it was longer. He said <laughs> he said he didn't bathe for like a month or something. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll say a month. It sounds more dramatic, right? Or he didn't brush his teeth also. I mean, it's important to brush your teeth, you know. So he didn't brush his teeth and bathe for like a month. Maybe he's watching. I don't think so. But um, Now just imagine that. You know how dirty the body gets and the teeth get? I mean, it's very unpleasant for oneself and also for others. So, but just as the body needs to be cleansed, it really need, it really does. It needs to be <laughs> cleaned regularly, daily. And just as the teeth need to be cleaned daily, um, similar, similarly, uh, the consciousness needs to be cleansed. Why just the body? Why just the teeth? What about the consciousness? So um, within spiritual life, you know, it's a process of cleansing the consciousness of selfish, anger, greed, all these different things. But then while cleaning, you're like, oh, that's really ugly. Oh, no. You know, that's in my consciousness. So that could be a little painful. So if I, I've experienced some of that pain. I've cried before, to be quite honest. <laughs> um... But the pain undergone in spiritual life, it leads to spiritual bliss. Whereas the pain undergone in material life just leads towards, in my opinion, or at least in the opinion of this particular tradition, just leads to more pain. But So if we undergo the pain in spiritual life, it leads to pleasure. So that's the idea. We want to... Because um, nat by nature, we're pleasure-seeking beings. So yeah, there is some pain, and I have experienced some pain, and that's kind of seen the not-so-divine qualities in myself. Um, but I've tried to battle those guys. I try, I'm, you know, I'm trying to battle those guys. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep... First you control them, and then you conquer them. So first you keep them nicely in a cage, and then after that you, you, you know... It's it's an example, but I know, you know the the zoo, the an, zoo animal lovers, and yeah, zoos are not obviously great places. But the example, if you if you get a wild animal, they'll you know they'll take the you know with a, with a bear claw, just you know with your head hit you know and you're you're finished. So um, if you imagine you you capture a wild animal, put him in a cage, it says that you shouldn't you should be careful with him. He's a wild animal still. Not okay. Now I'm going to trust him, and you know now he's my friend or something. I've trained him, but still they could attack. So similarly, we control our lower self. You could say, keep it nicely caged up, <laughs> and not trust it because it could attack. And it says it could ruin our spiritual lives. So, um, so yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, and um, it's not for those who are faint at heart. Is that what the saying is? Faint at what is faint? Faint of heart, kind of, yeah, there has to be a little bit of a warrior, you know, battle. But the thing is, in this world, everybody's doing that. You know, you think people get up to the high corporate ladders, ladders of, you know, high corporate positions just by being, you know, not warriors. Those guys are fighting, you know. In India, so, so much competition, right? We have, anyways, you're from Bangladesh. Sorry, I keep on thinking you're from India, Tapos. But you know about India. Where's where's somebody from India here? Anyways, in India, so much competition. There's like, there's like, there's like 500. Um, there's I don't know. There's some ridiculous, huge number of people trying to get into one particular school or program. It's just very few, and they're all fighting about it. You know, so it's a war. So, but anyways. All right. Is there a last um, comment or uh, question? All right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, one last. What do you do to clean your consciousness? Okay, um, mostly we're chanting this mantra. Mantra, man means mind, and tra means to free. So, so mantra is a set of words that free our mind. And what does it free our mind from? It frees the mind from 
um, all of these, you know, selfishness, anger, all of these lower emotions and tendencies. And 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 aside from freeing us from that, it it um, allows us to experience this higher pleasure, spiritual happiness. So that's the main cleansing process. And just as our body and teeth get dirty, right, or they need to be cleansed every day, it's advised that we do that every day. And um, just as, you know, we may become dirty, we do, our bodies. and some of the, um, the mind becomes polluted or unclean. And even in a daily basis, you know, therefore cleansing needs to be done regularly. Like my friend, he was one time, anyways, I, I won't give you the example of what he was referring to, but he was chanting very sincerely one day. He's like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare. And we asked him, hey, what's going on? You, you know, you, you okay? He said, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, get something out of my mind, you know. So, <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it works. So, the four principles, we're going to talk about that next time. All right. All right. So, yeah, thank you all for attending. Um, we have this every uh, Thursday. Um, so, yeah, feel free to uh, stop by whenever you can, whenever you like. We've, we've been going for like the last 10 years now. So, and um, next week we'll have uh, Bhajra Narayan Swami. He'll be giving the talk here. And... Um, and then, yeah, we're taking rotations. So I'm speaking once a month, Mukunda, Vijay, and Bajnarayan Swami, all once a month. So we don't get the same speaker every time. Okay. But anyways, we also have some uh, dinner here. So if you have to go, you could go. It's a free world. Or um, if you can stay, please stay. You could have your uh, dinner here if you like as well. Okay, thank you.